Hey guys, thanks for watching my first tutorial on how to make a time lapse video. That was a very basic tutorial. In this one, I'm going to do I'm going to show you how to make the camera move across the photograph. What I mean by that is let me bring in After Effects over here to show you. We're not going to use After Effects for this, but I'm just going to this this box right here represents 1080p, 1920 by 1080p. That's what you want. But as you can see, it's only clouds. This box out here represents the actual size of the photograph. Photographs are taken in a much higher resolution than video is normally taken in. So if I scale this down, I can shrink my photograph to 1080p. Okay, so sometimes when you, when you import stuff, your mind might be blown because it doesn't look right. If I select this and go to the effects controls tab and change it back to 100 percent you can't see anything you can't see the mountains or you'd have to drag it around to see the mountains anyways we can use that much higher resolution to our benefit so instead of changing like if we change this to 42 we can see the entire photograph in the in our 1080p sequence but l what if we changed it to something like 60 and then if we drag this cursor let me zoom in a little bit here if we drag this cursor up here to the beginning we're gonna set a keyframe this little diamond right here becomes a keyframe so at this point Premiere Pro knows that the scale of this should be 60% now we go to the end of the clip and we change this to 42 so we can see the entire picture. Now it knows that between this keyframe and this keyframe it needs to change it from 60 to 42. So if I drag across here you can see it slowly zooming out and it looks like I'm using a slider. Sliders are cool because it actually moves the camera and, it, and you get this change of perspective. But if you don't have a slider or the patience or the money to buy one, uh, you can kind of fake it. It doesn't change the perspective, but it still gives some motion to your shot that makes a time lapse look a lot more interesting, I think. So if we watch this, let's see if, if it doesn't jam up on me. It looks pretty cool. Those are some clouds in my, black, in my backyard that uh, look pretty cool. So I whipped out the camera. All right, now we can do something uh, even cooler. With keyframes, you can just make you can just make it be in motion. So let's go back to the beginning of this clip, and we're and we will keyframe. Let's see. Well, you can kind of see the outline of the photograph here. So I'm going to put it in the bottom corner here. No, I don't think I want to put it in the top because I want the mountains to come into view towards the end of the clip. And then I'm going to go. Oops, set the keyframe. Bring us to the other, to the end of the clip. See, it shrunk. It still knows that it needs to shrink, but it, now it needs to know that it needs to move. So we'll move this over to fill all the black box. If you select that, where'd it go? If you select that and you look closely, that's all these little dots are keyframes. Every frame, every single frame, 30 frames per second, this baby moves. So let's try again. Now it's zooming out and it's also panning from the top right to the bottom left. Pretty cool. Uh, we can do the same thing with this one, but we can make it let's make it go the other way so we'll start it at 42 this time we'll start it as big as it can you know with as much in view as possible we we'll go to the end of the clip and we will zoom in to let's say 55 and so now it zooms from big to little right? So we changed we changed directions. We're zooming out here, and then we zoom in, and we can change this too. We'll keyframe this here, 
and then we'll move it to the end. And I think the mountains look better in this shot, so I want to see, I want to keep them in view as much as possible. And that's all there is to it. Pretty cool. Uh, what else? Let me find some music. Music. Because music is good. Good old Kevin McLeod here. He's going to have some good music. Let's see. I don't know. I can't remember what any of these sound like. Let's just, well, in case they're, one of them doesn't fit with the time lapse. Let's see. What's this sound like? Okay. Let's try this one. Let's try something a little more upbeat here. We got anything? Whatever, we're going to use it. So, we want to edit to the music. We want it to change from one clip to the next at one of these. You can see the beats of the music. So, let's do that. Right here, we'll put the first, that spike there. this one to end like right there so we can just bring that in bump this down and we can bring this in as well or let's leave that out and let's bring this in put them together and then we'll go to effects video transitions dissolve cross dissolve pretty cool. It's almost like at the same moment. Now let's say, for example, that this clip of music is too short. Right? Or let's say it's a little bit too long. And but it's the perfect music you you want to use it. You can't live without it. Let's just make this a little bit longer. Let's cheat a little bit. Go to speed and duration and change this to 75%. Just made your clip longer. Uh, now we can match it with the music. Let's see if it looks terrible. Let's just double check. That one looks nice and smooth. This one also looks nice and smooth. So if you need to cheat a little bit and bump your time around, that's how you do it. Thanks for watching everyone. This has been a somewhat half-assed, poorly planned tutorial on how to keyframe a time-lapse video, but I hope it was simple enough that you could follow along. Thanks.